Absolutely. I agree with you. What I said is that we have to survive the next thousand years, even with the, the problems that we ourselves create, we have to solve those problems too, before we can get to a point where we can survive past the next, mm -hmm. past the next thousand to five billion years. Because all those it other... Could be, you could, you could, it could in fact be the opposite, where it's like the closer you get to the speed of light, the heavier you get, you never get there. It could be the closer we get to a thousand years, the more impossible it is to get past that thousand year mark because just getting there, I, we've created so many new problems. I we totally, can't even. The law I totally, absolutely agree with you. Under I absolutely agree with you. But it doesn't, it doesn't, that does not detract from what I'm saying, which is we do have to cross that hurdle successfully or we will die on this planet. What if life is just random and the fact that we're the species that's in charge now is random and good and bad don't really exist. It's just a Darwinian roll of the dice of who lives and who dies and what species survive and then there's nothing inherently good or bad about us. Okay, well here's the thing. My premise, my premise at the beginning of this talk, let me just answer this question. My premise at the beginning of this talk was that sapiens, specifically human sapiens, was a good thing. I know. And I'm if we disagree with that, that then, then we disagree with my entire argument, which is fine. Well, maybe but we could address the idea of time zero, the idea that in all physics, in any proof, time moves in both directions. There's a symmetry in it. So the idea that we're looking forward or back, there is only the timeless now, this moment. So there is no idea of the past and the future. Okay, it's but that, all doesn't help, but that doesn't help when the Earth explodes. Inside the <laughs> Maybe we're seeing, <laughs> right, right, we're, we're seeing oh, yeah, echoes from what happened before, and you know, it, this is just something to think about. Are, the I idea agree. of the linear progression of time is maybe not what it's all about. But these are not going to help us survive to have these well, thoughts no, pass by. No, but maybe we have to explore this. You guys, by the way, you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously you I love really everyone here. I don't have the answer to, to that you? question. What? To me personally? Well, yes. But even well, more so, the argument great, that we're great, looking great, back great, or looking great, forward great. maybe is a null argument. Maybe it's all for naught. Maybe this is not even something that we need to be talking That's about. That's a perfectly valid <laughs> viewpoint. There's plenty of nihilists that would agree with you. I'm, I, I, but no, but I'm not. I mean, the idea of, okay, you were saying about the illusion. I don't mean that pejoratively, by the way. I really don't. I, there's a per it's perfectly I'm, I'm valid not, to say. But the idea of the illusion of the what that. is going on. This is a Buddhist philosophy of Maya. Everything is illusion that we're seeing, and you know, and so every. The only thing I know is that all these thoughts and all these conversations are valid, and we won't be having them past five billion you years. You don't know. We could be somewhere else in an alternate universe that exists here right now. The idea that our little feeble brain knows what's really going on. The thing is, the thing is well, I, that's possible, but I, I know that the Earth is not going to survive past five billion years. Yeah. You can't. That's one thing I know. Yeah, all the other things that I don't know, all these conjectures and all these possibilities yeah. are perfectly valid. We can't even have these conversations if we don't valid. have somewhere to sit. They're perfectly valid conjectures. They're perfectly valid possibilities. They've been reasoned out by people way smarter than me and written down on paper in, in ways that I can't comprehend. However, there are a few things that I do know. Those pieces of paper, in that form, and those conversations won't exist. They exist past a certain point. It's it, and you'll see later if we get to it. You'll see <laughs> <laughs> it's quite possible that the way to survive is to create a hole in this universe and and either create a new universe or step into one that already exists. There's plenty of ways out of these predicaments, but not if you don't get past the first thousand years. Here's, here's, here's another way. Of, I think what some people are trying to say is a flaw in your logic. Just because sapiens is a good thing doesn't necessarily lead to the idea that you want sapiens to survive. Sapiens I being okay. a good thing. So maybe you want an evolving. Well, wait, you know, wait, wait, just finish your thought because I vehemently disagree with you. It may be that the best thing about sapiens is to sit here and enjoy it. The whole point of sapiens is we're going to inevitably go extinct. And we would be squandering the beauty and wonderfulness of sapiens to spend our time trying to build a spaceship to get off the planet. Really some, some people find joy. Some, some people find joy in building spaceships. Listen. But that's what you listen. Enjoy. Some people, maybe. The propagation of intelligence throughout the throughout the universe does not preclude joy. It's a very simple statement. It's very simple and very true. Some needs to be normatively working towards this. Some people find joy in that. 
I think the joy is in the beauty of discovery and that whatever form it takes. On, okay, we, we, we need to we move. Can move on. <laughs> okay, so. Um, these, this is a re recapitulation of the, the things that we talked about before with the addition of in, in five billion years, uh, down towards the end, the sun will swallow the earth unless something's done about it. Um, <laughs> will Smith is that. Yeah, that's the sort of God's like, what the fuck, that was that one. Was well, there's I mean, a viewpoint that... These are, all, these are all valid, absolutely, perfectly valid viewpoints because nobody knows the <laughs> nature of, nobody knows the, uh, nobody knows the uh, ontogeny of the universe. Nobody knows how it got here. Could, it's entirely possible that some do create it. So, I mean, you laugh, but uh, it's really you have to take these things seriously yeah, because they are possible. It's cool. So that's why I'm trying to stick to things that I do know the answers to. I don't know. <laughs> Next slide, please. So, yeah, once we get past the uh, five billion year mark, it, this assumes like we've colonized, we're off the planet, we've probably shed our... Um, We've, we've likely shed our corporeal uh, bodies in some way because there's, there are actually problems in surviving to the next 10 to the 100th years if we do have corporeal bodies. It basically, it's, it's really, really hard. You, you, you can only survive past. Well, we'll see. You'll see. Okay, next slide. Um, so here's the timeline. This, is, this timeline is predicated on a couple things. It, it, it pays homage to the grand unified theory, which is in a bit of disrepair right now, but it's the best thing so far for this kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of different timelines available. This is the one that I chose to sort of elucidate maybe the main line of thinking. So galaxies disappear from view. The, the universe is expanding uh, anywhere from 100 billion to 3 trillion years from now. Um, everything except the, uh, the, the local supercluster, the Virgo supercluster, everything except that because that's held together pretty decently by gravity. Uh, everything else in the universe recedes too quickly. We'll be, we'll be alone, at least in terms of the Virgo supercluster, which is about, I don't know, 40 major galaxies and like uh, 50,000 dwarf galaxies or something like that. My numbers could be wrong. Wikipedia is a great place to figure that one out. So star formation ceases 10 to the 14th years. The stellar, the stella, stella, the stella <laughs> era ends. <laughs> All stars are dead, uh, basically because of uh, a lack of fuel, a lack of hydrogen to be, uh, to be converted into helium, and you know, and all the concomitant uh, stuff that goes on there. Planets detached from stars. Uh, this is a weird one. Ten, fifteen years, basically because uh, over this time scale, uh, uh, suns and galaxies are colliding, and uh, planets are getting stripped from their suns because of the perturbed perturbations of their orbits. Um, stars detached from galaxies for the same reasons. Uh, so you've got a bunch of basically dead stars, brown dwarfs, neutron stars, black holes, uh, spreading out kind of like a billiard table across the universe. Uh, orbits decay by gravitational radiation, so whatever's left pretty much coalesces into black holes. Galaxies disappear into black holes, that means everything goes in. Protons de decay is complete. This is predicated on uh, the Grand Unified Theory. Some people take issue with this. I've tried to take that into account down here. However, basically what this means is that uh, new, uh, protons aren't, uh, aren't indissolvable. In other words, they decay. This is the theory. They decay like everything else. They didn't find evidence of this. They said that the lower limit for this was 10 to the 36th years okay, for that half-life. Uh, but again, they didn't find evidence for it. That's why that Grand Unified Theory is actually under siege right now. So. Uh, mat matter is liquid at zero temperature. I don't really understand this one. I think what this means is that um, over, over time, uh, the uh, uh, subatomic particles that make up particles themselves, uh, since there is quantum fluctuation, and since there's uncertainty as to their position, for the same reason that black holes evaporate, um, uh, particles that actually evaporate their, um, sorry, um, neutrons, protons, electrons actually evaporate their uh, constituent components. Not electrons, anyway. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, black holes evaporate for the same reason at the event horizon. Uh, this is uh, something work that what's that dude's name again? In the wheelchair? Huh? Hawking. Uh, Hawking. Yeah, yeah, it's not working anymore. So tired. No worries. He uh, he postulated that uh, black holes evaporate. They do indeed. So basically, at the end of all this, around uh, ten to the hundredth years, you're left with 
a, uh, a sea of expanding uh, useless 